Welcome back to another video guys. In this one I'm going to give you a general shipbuilding tutorial covering all of the building stages. Just to be clear though, this isn't a tutorial for any specific ship. This should give you enough information so that you can design and build your own ship. Before I begin to show you how to start building, I'm quickly going to describe the anatomy of a ship because understanding how a ship works will make building and designing one a little bit easier. So the main part of a ship is the hull. This is the body of the ship, which is partially submerged in the water. There is the keel, which is the central beam along which the hull of the ship is built. And the decks are obviously the floors of a ship. I assume all of you are familiar with the masts, so I'll move past those. The spars are the horizontal beams that connect, usually horizontally, to the masts. The sails hang on these spars whilst the ship is sailing. The rigging is a collection of ropes which are used to support the masts and spars, kind of like a suspension bridge, but they do also allow the crew to manipulate the sails, obviously a very important function. Moving to the sails, there are three main types of sails I think you need to know about. There are square sails, which are exactly what you'd imagine. They are the square shaped sails that make up the majority of the sail surface area on most ships. Stay sails, which are usually triangular, but sometimes they do have four corners, are fixed between two masts or between the front mast and the bowsprit. And finally, there is the mizzen sail. This is the sail connected to the, the back mast or the, the mizzen mast, which is usually triangular, but again, sometimes they do have four corners, just like the stay sails. Moving back to the lower parts of the ship again, the cabin or cabins are the decorative rooms at the back of the ship. It's sort of like a miniature decorative house, which has been built on an angle that matches the curvature of the ship. Along the hulls of most ships, there are stripes and various bits of detail, uh, which you should consider before making your own model. And finally, there is the beakhead. This acts as a platform for the crew so that they can reach and manipulate the front sails. It should be, along with the cabins, the most ornamental and decorative part of the ship. Sometimes a ship will also have a figurehead at the front, which is sometimes a nice addition. Now that you know the basic anatomy of ships, you can begin to plan your build. Obviously, this is the time when you need to decide what type of ship you'd actually like to make. It's a good idea to find some plans or pictures of the ship you'd like to make. Uh, online 3D models are particularly helpful. If it's your first ship, don't be tempted to make a really big or complicated ship. Obviously that's completely up to you. I doubt you'll listen to my advice anyway. That's exactly how I would think as well. In regards to scale, I usually go for one to 1.5 scale ratio. So for example, if you wanted to make the Black Pearl, which is 50 meters long, you would make it 75 blocks long in game. I think this works quite well because it allows for enough head height between the decks and it makes the cannons look fairly well scaled. Sometimes it's hard to find the right scale, especially with an intricate object like a ship. So if you're in doubt, go for a 1 to 1.5 scale, roughly at least. If you're keen enough, you can base your plan off a real plan. Uh, you'll need a plan for the whole exterior. Uh, if you can't find this, if you can't find a complete plan, just find another plan for a similar ship and use that to fill in the missing pieces. Once you have a completed plan at your disposal, draw a basic sketch over it using a photo editing program. Uh, just draw on the essential details over the top. Scale this down so that it is one point uh, 1 to 1.5 or whatever scale you would prefer and then finally refine this pixelated version and copy it into Minecraft. You, you can use Spritecraft for this if you want to save time, that's what I do. If you're building straight into Minecraft though, you should first decide where the waterline should go. Usually the waterline goes halfway up the ship's hull, depending on what type of ship you're making of course. It should come just under the wider section of the hull. The first thing to start building is the hull followed by the keel. Once you're happy with the shape of these two parts, you can then start to plan the decks, cannons and cabins. This does take some time and isn't particularly interesting, but it is important because it will make the rest of the build a lot easier and it will help you to avoid any unnecessary mistakes 
later on. You can then start on the masts and bowsprit. Usually you'll want to place three masts, but again, this will depend on the ship that you're making. You can add spars, rigging, and stay sail plans at this stage as well. Uh, I find that this helps me to see what the ship will look like before it's finished. This is really useful because, again, it allows me to correct any mistakes or imperfections before I've invested a lot of time into floor design. Once the side plan is done, you can now start on the top plan. Generally, ships will have a fish-like shape to them. Obviously, this makes them very hydrodynamic, which is exactly why they're designed in this way. You can also use this plan to design the decks and the cabins in some detail, if you'd like to. I usually do, so I recommend you do the same. Once you've made your plan, you can now begin to connect the top and side plans. This is pretty easy, and at this point, the ship's shape really comes to life. If there are any changes that you think you should make at this stage, feel absolutely free to make those changes. Uh, that goes for any stage, really. You should then start planning the upper decks in some detail, decide where the stairs are going and how each deck connects to one another. You don't need to do this in much detail at the moment, but doing it in some detail will help you visualize how the ship will progress. The rib should then be placed vertically, running all the way down the hull. Uh, you can leave about three blocks between each rib. But that's totally up to you. I find that three is about right for me, but you can leave bigger gaps if you're lazy. The rib should have a pear or light bulb shape to them. Again, depending on the type of ship, but the vast majority of wooden sailing ships are designed this way. Now the ribs and the framework are complete, you can now start to fill in the gaps. Just begin by placing blocks between the ribs that you've made. This doesn't have to be perfect at this stage, but try to make it look somewhat natural. Once that's done, you'll notice that the layers do look quite jagged. Uh, imagine for a moment that you're cutting an apple with a knife. An apple is obviously almost spherical, so the slice you'll cut will be circular. If you were to cut a rugby ball or an American football for you American viewers, because it's elongated, the slice you'll get will be oval shaped. A ship is similar in shape to a rugby ball or American football, so the layers should be oval in appearance. You can start this process wherever you like, but I usually like to smooth out the central layer first and then progress outwards. You should do this to the side and the bottom of the hull. When you reach the stern, or the back of the ship and the cabin area, you should leave those areas rectangular. Don't round those off. If you've completed this process, it's a good idea to look at the hull from multiple angles, uh, check for any jagged bits, but don't obsess too much about this. As long as you reach a reasonable standard of quality here, the rest of the build should go on fine. So don't worry if it's not absolutely perfect. Completing the decks is pretty easy. Make sure that you correct any mistakes before you begin placing all of the blocks. I usually make some changes to the deck plan after completing the hull because many of the problems become apparent only at this stage of the build, which is fine. It's absolutely normal. Obviously use slabs for a smoother curvature and slabs also require less headspace than full blocks. I usually prefer just regular oak slabs, but obviously that's totally up to you. The cannon ports can also be placed into the hull once the decks are completed. This really brings the ship to life. You'll get a sense of the look and specifically the curvature of the ship, which is really important. You should finish planning the stairs, ladders and rooms at this stage. I don't mean you should perfect them, but you should know almost exactly where they're going to be now. This will again give you a clearer image of how the ship will progress. So if there are any problems, fix them now before you've put any serious detail into them. One last thing that I'll mention, it's a good idea to place internal ribs and supports. I usually make these every three to five blocks, usually every four blocks along the inside of the hull, but you don't need to do this in every area, such as the cabins or small rooms. They, they probably don't need any, any supports or ribs. Onto the colour scheme. Easy, right? <laughs> Not so much. The, the colour scheme is strangely one of the hardest things to get right when it comes to shipbuilding. It's a really important aspect that will hugely affect how the ship looks. 
get this wrong and your ship will be far from where it could be in terms of quality. Most ships will have a few horizontal stripes across the exposed section of the hull. Some will have decorative bright upper sections. Explaining to you how to create a colour scheme is a really hard thing to do. It's like explaining why certain pieces of art or music are so good. There are so many ways you can make a good colour scheme. There aren't very many general bits of advice I can give. Fortunately, I think everyone or most people have an intuitive sense of what works and what doesn't. What I will say though is that contrasting colours seem to work quite well. It's also a very good idea to make key features like the beakhead and the cabin stand out. Make those features the brightest, the most eye-catching bits of your ship. When you do start creating those coloured stripes, you can use slabs to create a smoother curve than if you were to just use full blocks. This does make the ship look wider as you will have to place these slabs on the side of the hull, but I think in the vast majority of cases it is worth the cost. You can also incorporate these slabs into the colour scheme, but I usually use dark slabs because I find concealing them usually looks better. Just to recap, the beak head acts as a platform for the crew so they can reach and control the front sails. It should be, along with the cabins, the most ornamental and decorative part of the ship. Like I said before, there will sometimes be a figurehead on, on the front as well. Depending again on the ship that you're making, usually if it's a big ship or a very decorative ship, you should add a figurehead of some kind. Start by making a basic plan for the beak head using full blocks. Lay the foundation for the kind of curvature you'd like the beakhead to have. Generally, beakheads will have one to three horizontal layers, but this is highly dependent on the type of ship you're making. These horizontal layers are best made using slabs and stairs after you have laid a foundation, of course. There should also be vertical layers, and these are best made with wall blocks. It's really difficult to explain how to make a beak head for ships in general because they do differ so much. All I can do really is explain to you how to build the most common design and give you a few examples and just generalized tips. Creating a cabin should be a more familiar challenge for you, but with a few twists. It's essentially like creating a house on the back of a ship and on an angle. This means that the windows and decorations which are close to the back of the ship should be higher than the windows and decorations which are closest to the front of the ship. On most ships, the back window should only be one block higher, two at most. Often cabins won't be box shaped like most houses are. They are more organically shaped, which makes the challenge even harder. But for me, that makes it more fun. Before I begin, I always lay a basic framework so that I can see if there are any changes I have to make before I've invested time into any particular design. You can find many useful ship models online. 3D models are particularly useful. You should be able to use your original 2D plan here, but if not, that's not so much of a problem. You'll just have to be more creative. As with making a house, make the frame Fill the frame in, add the detail, and add the depth. As you do this, make sure that it is in line with the ship's natural curvature. Don't stress too much if it's not perfect right away. These things never are. When you are adding detail, always consider its purpose. Does this section require support? Should there be a safety railing here? Most things on ships and buildings in general have some sort of purpose. Only after the functional aspects are complete should you focus on ornamentation and decoration. That's what I think anyway, it's obviously totally up to you. Once again, make sure that your cabin stands out, like with the beak head and the figurehead. You want to use a bright colour. Historically, cabins were often painted gold, which is a very nice option. I often use sandstone because it's the nearest block to gold which comes in slab, stair, and wall variants. So the spars are the horizontal poles that the sails attach to. I usually angle them so that the spar is made up of sections of between four to six blocks. This will make the ship less symmetrical, which does make the build harder, but it will also make the ship look more natural and realistic, as it will look like the wind is pushing the sails and the spars slightly to one side. 
You can also taper the spores using full blocks and slabs. Trapdoors might also be useful. It's important to choose the length correctly. Again, looking at various examples online makes this much easier. Both 2D pictures or plans and 3D models are very useful. Onto some rigging, you should start with the shrouds. These are the vertical ropes that attach to the mass and act as support, kind of like the cables on a suspension bridge. Use wool or some other full block before moving onto the final fences. Using a picture or a model of the ship that you're recreating, locate where the shrouds should attach the hull and begin to make a straight line of blocks up to where the shroud should attach the mast. You can make a second line which represents the outermost shroud and angle it so that it meets in the same location on the mast. You can then fill this framework in. Once that's done and you're sure that it's correct, you can then start to replace these temporary blocks with the permanent fence blocks. Usually I go for spruce or sometimes dark oak, but obviously that's up to you. You can use walls or iron bars as well if you'd like to. Whatever you think is best for your ship. At the bottom of the shrouds, I like to add never brick walls because they look like stropping blocks. I think I think that's the correct term. Ship's terminology really is too complicated. So at last we come to the sails. Many people struggle with sails. Uh, they are quite hard for newer builders, but I wouldn't worry that they're not as hard as you might think. Of course, using the right techniques in mind. You should start off like you did with a ship's hull. Make a 2D plan first and base this off various pictures of sails of the ship you are intending to recreate. Once that is done, you can start to make a framework that is three dimensional. Begin by moving the middle blocks forward to form a C shape as if the wind is pushing the sail forward whilst the sail at its edges is held down still. Really try to imagine what a sail would look like under these circumstances and combine that mental image with some online examples. As with the hull, begin to make ribs across the sail framework. These ribs should increase in curvature as you near the center of the sail so that it really looks like it's been pushed forward by the wind. Once you're happy, you can start to fill this framework in. It really won't look great at this stage. The layers will look jagged, but then you can now start to smooth those out. Once again, imagine the shape that you would create if you were to cut through a sail with a laser. <laughs> would it be square? Obviously not. It would look oval shaped with some imperfections where the wind's effect is uneven. This will take some time and it will take some practice to be proficient. I've been doing it for many years and I'm still not perfect. Moving on to the rest of the rigging, you might already have a basic 2D plan for this. I know I usually do. I like to start with full blocks again, just as with the shrouds. Usually some kind of wool because it stands out. The rigging should be straight or taut, but if you do have to make a slight curve, make it look like the rope is drooping downwards just ever so slightly. Rigging is fairly easy to make in creative mode. If you have to build a lot of rigging in survival mode, I wish you all the best. For the more horizontal ropes, use gates, and for the more vertical ropes, use fences. Don't attach sections to one another. This will make the rope look too thick and just ugly. As I mentioned earlier, I think spruce or dark oak fences and gates are the best choice for most ships. Always have in mind the purpose of every rope. Is it used as support or is it used to manipulate the sails? No part of the ship will ever look perfect. And this is particularly true for rigging. The blocks in Minecraft really don't allow for a perfect rope-like structure. Personally, I don't mind this too much. It makes the build challenging and forces you to adapt certain things. The ship that you make won't be a perfect reconstruction. It will have to be your own design for the most part. Uh, and I think that's a good thing. Now to the flags. Most flags are rectangular, obviously, but some flags are long and thin, uh, which look very fancy. Just pick whatever you think is appropriate for your ship and that looks good. To begin, make the flag two-dimensional. Don't make it straight, add some curve to it as if gravity and the wind are having an effect on it. Once you're happy with the 2D shape, bring the blocks outwards starting at the edge. 
and do this until the flag looks natural. It's pretty easy, I think, but maybe this will also require a bit of practice to perfect. For the colors, pick a simple pattern. Because flags are small, they will contain only a few blocks, so you won't be able to recreate a com complex pattern. You will need to simplify anything like the Jolly Roger, for example, but the end result can still be quite attractive. Coming back down to the decks now, you should already have most things planned out, but now is the time to affect those details and add a few more. The first things I like to add are hatches. These allow the crew to move items from deck to deck. They have a kind of grid-like look to them. Onto the central hatches, you can add some lifeboats. You can add just one if it's a small ship, but usually you'll want to add three if it's a fairly large ship. You can also add something called a capstan. This is something which the crew rotates in order to pull a rope or chain. A wheel or a whip staff is needed to steer the ship, of course. A bell and lanterns are necessary additions. You can also add various tie down points for the rigging next to the base of the masts. Ships will also have some small supports at the base of the masts, so perhaps they are also worth adding. And finally, we come to the dreaded interior. To be honest, it's not really my favourite stage, but maybe you'll see things differently to me. You should have already added those ribs and supports that I mentioned earlier, but if you haven't added those, you should do so now. You should perfect any room layouts now as well. Things like doors, internal windows and so on should all be sorted. It's just like making an interior for a house, except on an angled floor and with curved walls, so it's not exactly easy to be honest with you. As with the exterior, use depth and a well thought out design. I know, very ambiguous, I'm sorry about that. The cabins should be decorated elaborately. Add tables, chairs, bookshelves, lanterns, all sorts really. The captain's and officer's quarters should be located just outside the cabins between the ribs and the cannons. I like to position some bunk beds. In real life, these would be hammocks, but in game, I think beds make a good substitute. I think the best way of giving you some ideas is just to list off some things that you could add to your interior. Hopefully if you have added at least some of these ideas, your interior should be pretty much full. So barrels, boxes, small animal containers, small animals like chickens and pigs are actually brought aboard ships. Something surprising to me. So basically storage of any kind. Extra ropes and sails, a stove somewhere and various tools. There are loads of things that you could add, but those are some of the more obvious things that come to my mind. Unfortunately, you'll have to use your own intuition and creativity here, which may be slightly frustrating. Well, that's pretty much it for this tutorial, guys. I hope this video was useful to you. If you do have any questions, you can add me on Discord. My ID is in the description, or you can just leave a comment down below. As usual, thank you for any nice comments. I really do appreciate those.